Live from Kansas City, it's Comic Book Late Night with Captain Logan. Featuring thoughts on comic news, obscure character of the week, and a little something from the comic vault. And now, here's your host, Captain Logan! Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. Welcome to another exciting episode of Comic Book Late Night. Tonight is a really exciting night because we're going to be talking to J.K. Woodward, who is drawing the uh, really awesome looking upcoming uh, comic for IDW, Doctor Who, and, and uh, Star Trek Next Generation. And uh, it's going to be an eight-issue maxi-series. We're going to talk to him about that a little bit later. Right now, I'd like to introduce my amazing, helpful co-host. It's the incredible Tim Lyons. Oh, hey, how's it going, Cap? I'm just, uh, I'm not doing product placement at all. <laughs> I love how this is such a family show. And uh, also, Gloria, our chat screener. Say hello, Gloria. Hi. Gloria is a disembodied voice out of nowhere. Or possibly out of somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Somewhere directly to my left. Wow. You know more than I, I didn't. I didn't, real, I didn't realize that, Tim. Well, uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, it's time, once again, Tim, for... Uh, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? No, your Batmobiles. Hey, look! It's a Batmobile. Do you think this Batmobile is from 1989, 1990, or 1992? I'll be back at the end of the show to let you know the year of that Batmobile. And remember, you can find out all kinds of awesome, interesting things about Batmobiles on BatmobileHistory.com, which is where I get all of my Batmobiles. And uh, now, let's jump over to the trivia question for today in honor of J.K. Woodward and Star Trek and Doctor Who. The uh, question is... This year, IDW crossed Star Trek with which DC superhero team? That's the question. Uh, write your answers in the comments right now, and uh, we'll let you know the uh, correct answer at the end of the show. Um, and now, Tim, it's time for some really interesting fan art. This may be the most interesting fan art uh, we've ever had. Are I'm excited. Ready? Yeah, here we go. I, I found this on my own. This wasn't given to me by uh, any of the viewers, but here it is. Uh, this is a this is a Batman on a chalkboard. And oh, that's this awesome. is drawn by what must be the coolest janitor in the universe. This was drawn on a fourth grade classroom chalkboard. I don't know where, but uh, this janitor was so happy about how clean these kids made this room that instead of cleaning the room, he spent that time drawing this Batman. That's awesome. For the kids in the class. How cool is that? Very, very cool. So anyway... <laughs> um, so uh, for, for those of you that are still stereotyping janitors and saying they can't do anything but clean things, that guy's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Well, um, we got lots of cool stuff tonight, Tim. It's going to be yeah. fun. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm not stalling because I don't have anything going on tonight at all. I would never do. No, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, uh, let's go on. Let's go on now to um, a uh, a film. Uh, today's uh, video of the week is a fan film that was made by John Geckler. This is the second place winner for the uh, Superman Celebration last year. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and promote the Superman Celebration a little bit because it's happening uh, this June, and uh, they're doing the fan film festival as always. The competition, and uh, the deadline is earlier this year. It's it's in April. I think it's tw the twelfth or thirteenth. Um, uh, and I'm actually putting in a film again, um, and so uh, I'm working on that. And uh, John actually uh, watches the channel. Uh, he and I talk every now and again um, over a personal message, and I wanted to give him a quick plug, too, because he does some uh, really fun work. So uh, here is uh, his second place winning. He actually won first place also. Uh, he won both first and second place. Uh, his stuff was so cool. But uh, I wanted to show the, the second place one uh, mostly because it's only three minutes long. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so I thought, I could, I, I thought I'd do that. So anyway, uh, this is the ultimate fan film. Here, 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 that's the name of it, uh, the ultimate fan film, and here it is. When the world needs heroes beyond the ordinary, select individuals band together. In the name of justice, they are in a league all their own, and they call themselves the Fan Club. Super Fan, Bat Fan, Martian Fan Hunter, and Wonder Woman. Fan. Join them now in their latest adventure as they face the onslaught of the Oscillator. That thing has caused enough damage. This ends now.
He will be missed. Hold on. What is it? Wait for it. Batfan, how did you escape? I was ensnared by the mechanical monster, but as fate would have it, at the last second, I was able to hit the quick release on my bat fan cape. And that's why I don't mind that he doesn't talk much. Would have been seen. Mean? So yeah, it was a little different, right, Tim? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's there's a there's a fun ending there um, with uh, with uh, Spider-Man that I that I that I forgot to show, but I'll let you go uh, go look at that yourself. That way you can give John some views. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tim. What's going on, Cap? It's time for the news. Brilliant. Yeah, man. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Well, Tim, lots of news happened this week. Actually, this was, compared to the last few weeks, this is actually somewhat of a slow news week, but um, enough that I can say lots because I have, like, you know, nine or ten items, so, you know, I can at least also, say Also, you're the well. host. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. I'm just saying that nothing is nearly as exciting as some of the stuff that we've had the last couple weeks. Nothing like, uh, uh, you know, something like before Watchmen. Um, but uh, but uh, here's one sad thing I'd like to talk about. Uh, Sheldon Moldoff uh, passed away at a 91, uh, this, I think, last week, and... Uh, um, he was one of the early comics pioneers. Uh, he was the last remaining artist who contributed to uh, Action Comics number one, believe it or not. Uh, he, he did a uh, sports page in the uh, back inside cover on that, and uh, and, and he was still around. Um, he also uh, drew major covers like Flash uh, Comics number one, and co-created a bunch of major Batman characters, including Batgirl, Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy, and Ace the Bat-Hound. Uh, so, uh, so Which he... one of these is not like all the others? <laughs> <laughs> the one that's a dog, Tim. <laughs> also... I shouldn't laugh about the guy dying because honestly, I mean that's that's quite an accomplishment right there. I mean that to, to contribute to action number one and uh, it, you know actually you know contribute to. Uh, that many Batman characters, even if Ace the Bat Hound is included. Oh, Ace the Bat Hound can be really fun, though. There's there's places where he's... Did you ever watch Batman Beyond? I mean, I guess that wasn't the same Ace, but you know, <laughs> it was the only place in that continuity we had an Ace, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but 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 anyway, um, that's uh, yeah, that's kind of sad. But I should also tell you, Tim, that uh, if you think that's kind of if you think that's weird, he also uh, uh, was was the guy responsible for the Zebra Batman in the in the mid '60s. He did the Zebra Batman. I guess I'm I'm unfamiliar. And believe I'm it or not, he was going uh, to sit here ashamed now. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, he was also um, doing things off and on for DC all the way up until the early 2000s. Believe it or not, uh, he did a uh, the, the last thing he did he did for DC was a one shot um, called World's Funniest. It's kind of ripping on World's Finest, um, and uh, he did some stuff in that. So anyway, uh, very interesting. Um, Sin City 2 is going to finally happen. Uh, it's been talked about for years and years. It's finally going to happen. It's filming this year. Um, apparently, it's going to uh, be combining uh, Dame to Kill For with uh, two new stories. And uh, there's no word yet yet on casting on who's going to be in it, uh, if there's going to be any holdovers from the first movie. Um, if you don't remember, uh, Sin City came out in 2005, so it's been a long time now. Do we know and if Rodriguez is doing the He sure is. He's going to be directing it. And I don't know if uh, Frank Miller is co-directing or uh, if he's just doing it all by his lonesome. Well, if, if Rodriguez... Uh... You know, takes up the directing role again. I mean, it should be pretty cool. He should be able to to get a great cast together, especially given the popularity of the first one. Certainly. It's it's ironic as popular as Sin City was that it's taken this long to make it, and I don't know exactly what all the um, you know complications are, but I but I just think that it's interesting because that's one of those few movies that because of what it is, it makes sense to have sequels. You can make it as many as you want to of that. You know, yeah, but it may be know? because uh, it may be because Predators sucked. Predators <laughs> did kind of did uh, it? I heard good yeah, things. You know, I, I actually kind of liked it, but Adrian Brody is not on the same level as Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, but wasn't Predators, like, last year or the year before? I mean, this has been limbo a lot, in limbo. Yeah, a lot but he was working that. on that for quite a while, and it was it was one of those things that he said he was doing it for the fans because they always deserved a, a decent Predator sequel, and they never really, you know, got it. Uh, I guess he didn't think Predator 2 was that good, but, um, yeah, you know, he wanted to make to Predator what Aliens was to Alien, and... Um, you know, it turned out it was it was mixed. You know, I I liked it to a degree. Uh, I liked the fact that Walton Goggins was in it. I always liked Walton Goggins, uh, Shane Vendrell off off of the Shield for those unfamiliar. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I liked Batman versus Predator. <laughs> um, actually, I like all of them. Uh, so, uh, next bit of news. Disney is going to start putting Marvel superheroes in its theme parks. Uh, no news yet exactly on what exactly they're planning. Uh, but, yeah, costume superheroes will start making regular appearances uh, with DC's uh, regular characters. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of surprised this didn't happen before. I'm, I, I'm not surprised that that's happening at all. Uh, and... The, there's uh, some new Avengers posters uh, released. Seems like every time something comes up with the Avengers, uh, we talk about it, and there wasn't a lot going on this week, so here they are. Um, some uh, neat posters. I'll just uh, show them real quick. There's um, there's one for all the major characters, and, and usually it's like it's like uh, you know one really major character, and then somebody in the background um, is how they did these, but they look snazzy. They really so, do. Yeah, they look really snazzy. Who knows for their artist? It reminds me a little bit of what they did when Daredevil came out, when they gave uh, you know each of the major characters in that um, posters. Except I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but I'm just saying that the advertising is similar. Um, so uh, more uh, weird Captain Marvel stuff going on. Uh, Ca Marvel has a character called Captain Marvel. Now this gets really confusing because we talked about DC's Captain Marvel last time. Remember that? <laughs> And we were talking about how DC changed their Captain Marvel's name to Shazam because there were uh, there, there was there were becoming it was becoming a legal thing, for, which I think is really dumb. Like I said before, Marvel is a word, and you should be able to use it, even if there's a company called that. Well, Captain Marvel decided to or Captain Marvel Marvel decided to jump on the bandwagon as soon as DC announced that uh, Shazam was going to be the new name of Captain Marvel, and they've now relaunched their Captain Marvel. As Captain Marvel. They didn't have to rename him because Marvel's their name. So, <laughs> um, there's this character from uh, years ago named Marvell, uh, M A R apostrophe V E L L, and he's Captain Marvel. And uh, he's, I think he's, um, I don't know very much about him. I think he's a Shi'ar character, but don't lynch me if I'm wrong about that. I, I just don't remember. Um, but anyway, so he's getting a book now. And um, at the same time, oh, and uh, this is all we have of it so far. Here's the teaser thing. Look, it says Captain Marvel on it. Yeah. It's, uh, as um, as uh, Duke and Manos like to say, it's a vague Marvel teaser. And then they just, <laughs> and then they just start, start saying, it's a vague Marvel teaser. So anyway, that's that's a vague Marvel teaser. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Duke and, uh, and Manos are either talking about that or have already talked about it. So go ahead and check out their new show on Duke Loops 1993's channel and a quick plug for them and uh so in 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 a related story uh here is shazam's new costume <laughs> so uh so the same the same week that uh he became a sith <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> they gave him this crazy hood i don't know why they felt the need to do that um but anyway uh it, it looked it looks pretty but yeah the hood's pretty funny uh yeah. So anyway, uh, like I said last time, that's supposed to start popping up at, uh, as a backup feature in Action Comics. Uh, at least that's what um, that's what I, I, I saw and reported a couple weeks ago. I think that's still uh, that's still the plan, as far as I know. Um, so look forward to that. Um, look forward to Shazam as a Sith. <laughs> <laughs> His new name is Lord Shazam. Darth Shazam. <laughs> yes. And he uh, and, and uh, anytime you talk to him on a hologram, if you're sitting at a conference table, he's sitting at the other end of it. <laughs> um, and uh, here is some uh, new digital comics news. I always like to talk about this because I think the digital uh, market is really interesting and uh, interesting things are happening with it. Um, Marvel is doing this new thing. Uh, they've got all these names for different things, and it's all connected to this big thing called re-evolution, um, which is, uh, you know, I don't know, a little bit silly sounding to me, but uh, putting two E's together like that is funny to me, but whatever. Anyway, uh, they've got this new uh, augmented re reality app that's going to be uh, digi digital only comics. So um, finally Marvel's going to start doing some comics that are only digital. They're not going to release in print. Um, I, I would be surprised if they didn't do some trades of some of this stuff, but uh, but anyway, uh, they're, they're not going to release them in print. Uh, and the first thing they're doing for that is Avengers vs. X-Men number one, Infinite. Um, I don't know exactly how important that is to the Avengers vs. Versus, um, versus X-Men story. I would assume that uh, it's probably it's probably not that important, um, but, uh, but who knows. And apparently there's supposed to be uh, 3D extra and all kinds of other things with the issues that they're going to release on this on, on this uh, app. So that's what's going on there. Um, so this is really, really interesting. There's this new uh, comic about to come out from uh, Liquid Comics, which is a... Uh which is the publisher? I don't know, um, but I uh, but I'm assuming uh, uh, kind of a small outfit. But um, it's called uh, Aliens versus I'm sorry, Dinosaurs versus Aliens, Tim. And it's being done. It, this is the coolest and oddest uh, collaboration I've ever seen. It's going to be done by Barry Sonnenfeld of all people. Yeah. Who yeah. directed uh, the Who directed the Tick series and um, directed uh, the Men in Black films and of course Men in Black Three is about to come out and he, yep. he, he's directing sure. that. And uh, I love Barry Sonnenfeld. He's one of my favorite guys. I I know Men in 
Black 2 is not very good, but I give him a pass because he's Barry Sonnenfeld. Oh, yeah. He's done so much um, awesome stuff over the years. And though. Grant Morrison. Um, Grant Morrison and Barry Sonnenfeld doing uh, Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. Now, I'm going to be surprised if there's any dialogue in this book at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just get, just get John Favreau involved. You can get Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs I'm versus sure aliens. that's why this is happening. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, but Cowboys vs. Aliens was a comic book first. Um, and then, but like nobody read it, and then it was a movie, and then people saw the movie. Um, but anyway, so uh, dinosaurs versus alien. I'm gonna buy this uh, just from that for that team alone. Um, here is a piece of artwork from it. Um, this is very violent and graphic, but uh, most of it was that I saw. Um, but anyway, yeah. So like like I said, um, at the very least, it won't take long to read. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be great if all you got were dinosaurs roaring and then alien speaking in a tongue that you couldn't understand? And that was the whole book. <laughs> but it's but it's one that you could decipher somehow. Like somehow you could. Decipher cipher it like, like a, a code? like well yeah exactly it'll be like one of those uh, just simple character replacement uh, type codes like in uh, Futurama that they did the first few seasons <laughs> you know where you could just totally just go on the internet and look up exactly what everything meant yeah, that's totally what they should do with it. Um, but anyway, uh, you can go to uh, newsorama.com and you can see uh, 19 pages of it they, they posted. Ni 19 pages. So um, I'm assuming it's going to be a pretty big graphic novel. I don't think it's going to be a series. I think it's going to be a graphic novel, although uh, don't quote me on that because um, I didn't read any... I didn't... Uh, I, I wasn't able to be sure that that's exactly what was going on. Uh, so now it's time for a poll. Gloria, are you ready for a poll? I am ready for a poll. <laughs> okay. Today, see, um, our chat screener loves polls. Here we go. Um, our, our poll uh, for today is, uh, the question is, do you buy digital comics? Uh, I thought this would be very interesting to... Um, Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Gloria just let me know uh, uh, via her amazing chat screening talents that um, <laughs> that Shazam is uh, apparently going to be a backup feature in Justice League and not in Action Comics. Um, I don't know where I read Action Comics, but anyway, um, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to know that. I so, can't shrug any harder, Captain. So, so thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why. Are you sure? Okay. No, that's that's better. No, that definitely is better. <laughs> so it is Paul. <laughs> Do you buy digital comics? I'd really like to know uh, uh, what our uh, chat folks had to say about this. Um, are you just reading in print, or do you buy digital comics, or do you do both? Uh, let Gloria know uh, there in the comments. She'll write that all down, and after we get finished with the tweet reviews, we will reveal the answer to the polls. Uh, Tim, now we're going to go to the cover for the week, and today's cover is Fantastic Four number 604. Uh, this was a really, really great issue. This ended um, the uh, giant uh, arc that Hickman's been been uh, working on for a long, long time, and um, and uh, it's such a great cover because uh, it, it puts it puts the four back together. Uh, you know, we had Spider-Man on the team for a while, and uh, Human Torch was dead for a while. Now everybody's back. Uh, I really like that they're making the big four in the background. It's, it's, a, it's a neat cover. Um, whether or not you like those costumes, it's it's a it's a neat cover. Uh, let's jump now over to some tweet review. All right, 140 character reviews. Here we go. I can't say it with a straight face. Um, so uh, these are reviews that I, if you haven't watched the show before, you didn't see it last time, um, I'm doing, uh, instead of doing full reviews now, um, I'm just doing these little tweet, tweet reviews on the Comic Vault, um, on, on the, uh, the the extra Comic Vault that I post sometimes on the channel. Um, I'm reviewing uh, some full arcs and miniseries uh, and things there when stories are done. And I'll just briefly let you know what I thought of issues um, here on Late Night uh, for over the last two weeks. Here we go. Uh, first of all, Spawn number 217. Before I read the tweet, I just gotta say, this is maybe the most gruesome cover of Spawn <laughs> I've ever seen, and it's Spawn. Anyway, uh, lots more being explained and stuff coming together, but the story is still dragging a little. The artwork is as good as ever, three out of four. Here is Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number eight. Fantastic action mixed with good heavy drama. The problems Miles' father and uncle give him are very interesting. 3.5 out of four. Venom number 14. This was the end of the Circle of Four arc that I just uh, reviewed last week. Venom AWOL arc tied too nicely together at the end, but Hulk Venom, Hulk slash Venom slash Ghost Rider is hilarious. Uh, fun arc, but uneven story. 2.5 out of four. Amazing Spider-Man 681. I found Johnny's dialogue even more distracting than last issue, but beautifully drawn and well plotted. Three out of four is Resurrection Man number seven. Great revelation about Mitch's powers and his past is getting interesting. Love seeing him in different major DC locales. 3.5 out of four. Here's Incredible Hulk number six. Hulk slash banner relationship still incredibly deep and involved. Background with Doom is so well handled. Wow equals the end reveal. Four out of four. 
There's Carnage USA, number four. Venom and Carnage interaction is great. Love that Spidey thinks Venom is the Punisher. Still not sure the story goes with this art. 2.5 out of 4. And here is the real Manos' Red Knight number 3. Everything wrapped up perfectly for Ark. Fantastic interaction with Red Knight. Uh, love the dotted textures in Ark. 3.5 out of 4. And finally, uh, the cover of the week, Fantastic Four number 604. Wow, powerful ending. Surprising reveal for Galactus. Galactus is my favorite character ever, by the way. Sam, I just love, I just love Galactus. Uh, moving father, uh, moving father slash son story. Epting's finest work. Four out of four. And now it's time for another exciting edition of Ask Captain Logan. Uh, for the next five minutes, I'm going to take questions from the viewers, do a little bit of audience interaction and participation. Anything you'd like to ask me about all this extremely invigorating news from this week, or anything else about comics, superheroes, um, Star Trek, Doctor Who, anything like that, uh, uh, ask me questions, and. Um, I'm going to not drink beer. Cap, what would it take to get you to watch a fantasy movie? What would it take to get... Well, I mean, because the thing is, yeah, I'm not a big fan of... Who asked that? Who asked that? Um, that was from Comics Kid. He's never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Allen. You know, I just uh, I just switched over to your chair <laughs> and you were gone. Oh, I was getting beer. <laughs> By the way, I have Tomorrow to say, is St. Patrick's Day. Um, this Come is on. probably extremely unprofessional of me, but uh, if folks are having a difficult time uh, hearing the questions uh, from Gloria, I'll go ahead and repeat them um, because I have my microphone in a different place today than it usually is, and um, chances are you guys are having a tough time, time hearing people from that microphone. So anyway, um, the question was, uh, would I? what would it take for me to watch a fantasy movie? And who, who asked that again? That was... Uh... Comics Kid, I believe. Comics Kid. Uh, well, the thing is, I, again, I'm not a big fan of sword and sorcery. I like other kinds of fantasy. Um, I don't know. For me, it's it's just got to be... If somebody says, hey, the characters are really involved and it's not all just about going and finding an artifact... That's what it takes. That's what it takes for me. I do like Lord of the Rings. That's that's the one, you know, uh, running off trying to find an artifact thing I really like because I think there is some pretty interesting characterizations there. Um, but uh, but anyway, I mean it's not my favorite thing, but I like. You know it. what I've always liked for running and finding artifacts? Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. There's less magic involved though. It's a different. It's a different kind. Less magic. Or not film. not entirely no magic, but less magic. Just throwing that out there. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, Trekker26 wants to know if you've seen the Superman vs. Elite trailer. I've not seen the Superman vs. Elite trailer. Um, I knew, it, I knew, I know it's happening. I know kind of sort of what it is. Um, but, uh, but no, I've not, I've not seen the trailer yet. Um, I didn't buy the, uh, well, the thing is I didn't buy the DVD for the, for the last, uh, Justice League Doom, um, which always has a feature on whatever the new one's gonna be. I just rented that on, uh, Amazon, so no, I haven't seen that yet. Um, but I will check it out. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, Lego Geek wants to know, how is Sarah? She's good. She's sleeping. <laughs> it's late night, and she worked all day. No, uh, Sarah's good. Uh, Sarah's Sarah's uh, got great great stuff going on at work. Um, I don't usually talk about personal stuff, but I'll just throw this out there really quick. Um, in case people don't know, uh, my wife's an architect. Uh, in case you're interested, um, she she uh, she designs buildings, and um, she's doing great with that. And um, and uh, she she got promoted at, at her job last year, and um, things are great. So yeah, just throwing that out. There. She's she's building she's doing buildings for Qatar. Of all places, really? Um, yeah, she, they're, they're they're doing this uh, this giant um, this giant kind of epicenter um, of like twenty six buildings, and uh, it's very it's very com uh, complicated and elaborate, and uh, the the royalty over there is paying them for it. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Man. Yeah, that's that's great. Wow, she's doing uh, pretty awesome. Though. What else we got? Excelsior wants to know what you think of this Spider Man thing. Spider Man. I'm not sure what he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Spider Man. Um, sorry if I'm an idiot and I should know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, unless there's an arc coming up or something that I don't know about. I don't know. David anyway. wants to know if Batman is night and Superman Blew that is one. day. Yes. Who is evening and afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> That's and this great. and 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 now comes the point. The inevitable point. I didn't think it would happen this early, Tim. But now comes the inevitable point where we have to wonder if Ask Captain Logan is a segment that should happen every episode. That's, that's the. <laughs> Batman is. Is this a riddle? Like, like is something gonna explode if I get it? If I get it wrong? Um, Wonder Woman is one of them. <laughs> Definitely the evening. Yeah. She's a lady of the evening. <laughs> She's a did you have to do that? That's hilarious. <laughs> That's well, brilliant. And what was the other one? Afternoon? I'm going to uh, say yeah, afternoon. Yeah, I think afternoon. Kid Flash. Move on. 
Goku wants to know. I don't know what that means. Goku wants to know how are you liking the TMNT comic. Uh, I, you know, I'm liking it um, a lot more now than I was. I, uh, I have to be honest. Um, I really wasn't sure about the big reveal in issue six, which I don't know if I want to spoil. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been an issue. Um, but yeah, they, they did something uh, very different for because it's, you know, it's new. It's new turtles lore. It's a relaunch. It's a totally different thing. Um, I mean, it's not totally different, but you know, it's it's their own continuity. And um, they did something I'm not real sure I love about it. But then in the very next issue, they introduced General Krang, and yay for Krang being a serious character. Woohoo! And I've seen the cover for ten, and they're bringing Shredder in. So yeah, exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm liking it a lot more now. Um, we'll see where they go with the weird thing I'm not talking about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, two more. Okay, um, which will come first? First, the Justice League or the Avengers 2? That's from Senior Nerd. Oh, that's good. Uh, I think the correct answer here is Avengers 4. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you say Avengers 4, Captain? Uh, because Justice League has almost happened... And then not happened so many times. Um, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that. I just mean <laughs> my, my. That was a joke. Yeah, Avengers two will happen before Justice League two happens. Um, I would figure. I would be impressed if they got it off the ground. Um, but uh, there are things I want to see before I see a Justice League movie. Man, I mean, not that I need it all to be in the same continuity. I've talked about this lots of times on the channel. Um, but I, yeah, there's other things I care more about than that. Um, I still really want a good, a good uh, live action Flash movie. The Flash has never been done right on 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 uh, on, on the screen in live action. In live action. Um, in the '90s, I mean, I liked his show in the '90s, but it's just not. It, it wasn't really. The same, the same thing. It's it was it was quite different. So anyway, wasn't Mark Hamill a bad guy in that? Series? Yeah, and he was awesome in that. Yeah. yeah, and Mark Hamill was the best part about that series. He was the trickster. He was only in two episodes too. But yeah, I know. Well, like he was. 11, the, that was the best so. two episodes ever. Yeah, it's got a really a, a decent pilot, but it's not really a, the Flash. I mean, you know, you know, Batman just came out. That tone was really popular, so they made Flash in that tone. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, one more. Uh, Red and Green wants to know. Uh, do you think the Avengers or the Dark Knight Rises will make more money? I think I answered this last time. Um, um, or no, maybe I answered this on the on the Q and A we've been doing. See, we're doing this and the Q and A at the same time, which is probably not real smart. Um, it's up Self indulgent in much, Captain Logan? No, no. I want to do something for audience participation on this show. You know, I want people to to be able to contribute to the show, and that's why that's why I do this. Fair um, enough. No, the thing with the Q and A on. on <clears throat> Geese on Nerds is just that we get so many questions that we can't make a whole show about that we take a lot of those questions and and um and just uh, put them answer them briefly because we don't you know we don't have a whole show to do. But anyway, um I don't know, man. Uh, I've been kicking this around a lot trying to figure trying to figure it out. I think Dark Knight Rises is getting hyped harder by the fans, so if that's any indication, uh, uh, it'll win it. But Avengers has, uh, in my opinion, as good if not better advertising. So. Um, you know, both both are going to be freaking huge. There's no doubt in my mind that they're both going to make a lot of money. There's no doubt in my mind that both are going to do over 80 million opening weekend. I'll say that. Um, I'll say that right away. I think they'll both uh, get close to 100, actually. Um, I'm but, inclined to agree. I think that that's totally what's going to happen. I, I would uh, venture to say that if one pulls out ahead later on, it's going to be the Avengers because uh, you think of the Dark Knight. It had that that real heavy momentum just because Heath Ledger died and it was such a momentous performance. You know that, that he had put forth as the Joker. Uh, we're not going to have that sort of event happening around this movie. Um, you know, if anything, it's just going to be trying to reclaim that same level of hype and that same level of, of um, you know, really momentum that they had going because of that event. So, uh, because you know, at the time people were saying, "Oh, well, you know, this is the role that that drove Heath Ledger crazy and made him go over the edge, and you know, he offed himself as a result." And you know, you think of the Joker, it's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll, I get, I gotta watch that." It's like trying to watch a train wreck. You know, you can't look away. Um, but it was also just a great, great performance. I don't think they're going to match up to that in any way, shape, or form. I don't think they're trying to. Which, I don't think they're trying to either. Which is good. But um, I think that certain people are going to expect them to do that. Oh, they are. That's the expectation, and, and that's why it's so hyped right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and I hate that because I think it's going to disappoint a lot of people. Um, this, this might sound really weird. I've said this a couple times, but I think it's going to disappoint everyone but me. In a lot of ways, and the reason I say that, not everybody. I, I, I what I mean by but me yeah. is the people who like begins as much or better than Dark Knight, um, because I can. I, it seems I don't want to say I can tell, but it seems like 
Dark Knight Rises, from everything we know about it, is going to have as much to do with Begins as it did Dark Knight. And as I said before, there's a lot of people who didn't even watch Begins or didn't care about Begins when Dark Knight came out. You know, yeah. um, look at look at the box office returns for Begins versus Dark Knight, and you can tell that a lot more people saw that movie, or yeah. at least they all saw it 80 times. <laughs> yeah. Dark Knight. Um, you know what I mean? But uh, but uh, Dark Knight was one of those. I think I've said this before. Dark Knight was one of those things where uh, it was really weird because it didn't feel like a sequel to a lot of people. It was just this huge movie. Movie, and I've never seen a sequel do what Dark Knight did. You know, where the, where, where the, where the sequel um, is what everybody cares about. Nobody even remembers the first one, but no one remembers it. No one's um, setting things up with Begins. The Terminator series. Terminator 2 completely blew away the first one. Most people have never seen the first one. They've seen the second one. Uh, a, the, the Alien series is kind of the same way. A lot of people haven't seen the Ridley Scott original, but Aliens they've seen James Cameron... That. Uh, yeah. You know, in, in the sequel there, but most people like yeah, the Terminator series is, is, is kind of the same way because Terminator Two became its own animal. It had its own, uh, you know, I, idea, and in fact, some of the ideas that James Cameron wanted to do in the first one ended up being in the sequel, and you know, it just ended up being this big thing in and of itself. And the Dark Knight did the same thing, except it also had that momentum from Heath Ledger's and the performance. Other big difference is that the Dark Knight doesn't have two in its title. Um, because at least you would have to know going to see Terminator 2 that, it, that there was one before it. True. Um, that's the only big difference. So, so I agree with you as far as how it was received. Yeah. But I would say that people who were just casual viewers who weren't necessarily paying attention and didn't see Begins maybe didn't even know that Dark Knight was a sequel when they saw it. They probably know now. But that, that they might have gone when it was on and didn't even realize it was a sequel. My point is, those people are gonna see are gonna see Dark Knight Rises and they're gonna expect a sequel to Dark Knight. And what they're gonna get is a sequel to both of them. And some of what they're gonna do sequel wise for Begins is gonna confuse people, or they're not gonna care about it. Um, I'm sure they're gonna do a lot of stuff dealing with Raza Ghul, and um, you're gonna have a lot of people who just aren't gonna care. You know. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I honestly. I like The Dark Knight better than Batman Begins, but it's not for the reasons that everybody else does. Like, I really do like Heath Ledger's performance, and I really do like the portrayal of the Joker. However, I also just like the, the, the tone of that movie a bit more. Like, uh, you know, I liked the origin in Batman Begins, sure, but, you know, I liked when we got past that a little bit more and were able to explore the, the character motivations, uh, you know, more deeply behind, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne and Batman, and, you know, he kind of developed more as a character in The Dark Knight than I feel that he did in, in Batman Begins, or at least in different ways that spoke to me more. Yeah, I'll I put it that it. way. Yeah. For whatever reason, I think Begins kind of spoke to me more, but, that, but they're both good movies, you know? Yeah, so you're they're, gonna, they're you're both gonna, great you're movies. Have that, yeah. yeah, it's nitpicking to pick one or the other, really. But Well, Gloria, um, do you have the, the uh, results for today's poll? I do have the results for today's poll. 13 said no, 2 said yes, a few said not yet, and 2 said both. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, you know, most of the people I talk to say that they don't really really read digital, and um, uh, it's it's interesting to see that, that, that uh, our poll results here um, uh, confirm that. Not that, uh, you know, that was a really large sample set. Yeah, I bet they all listen to vinyl, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can see why. There's a, there's a We're so playing vinyl records next episode. Oh, absolutely. So that's going to happen. Now I've got, we, I've got we a record have player. To now now yeah. that I've mentioned it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it'll be like the dancing toaster all over again. <laughs> and then maybe we'll do uh, vinyl, and then we'll bring back the dancing toaster to dance to the vinyl. That would be great. Yeah, can we do the same song from Ghostbusters 2? Uh, if I can find it before... You know, I think I've got it on weeks. cassette tape, but not on vinyl. It's not going to play on my record player thing. <sighs> I know they're both old, but it's... <laughs> One's older than the other, I know. Uh, it's time now to uh, go on to our interview. Uh, for this week, I uh, interviewed J.K. Woodward, uh, once again, who's who's uh, working on the uh, Doctor Who Star Trek The Next Generation crossover. Uh, really awesome, interesting-looking project. Uh, I'm extremely excited about it. It's probably the book I'm most looking forward to coming up pretty soon. And uh, let's take a listen. Hey, everybody. This is Captain Logan, and I'm here with the very talented J.K. Woodward. How you doing? Before we jump into the comic grill, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you to talk a little bit about how uh, the TNG Doctor Who crossover got greenlit and uh, how you got brought into the project specifically. Uh, well, I can tell you more about how I got brought into it than than how it got greenlit. I wasn't, I'm not uh, privy to too much information. All I know is it was not easy. Uh, it, uh, uh, this has been a dream of Chris Ryle um, from what I heard for a while now, and he only recently managed to pull it off because you got two. Um, two big properties here and, and two powerhouses behind it, BBC and CBS, who are very protective of their properties. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised yeah. it happened. Uh, 
But um, basically, it started with with my part in it. Started with uh, me just every once in a while I'll check in with IDW uh, if it looks like I'm going to have some time in the future and find out. Normally, I try to find out if there's any Star Trek work or Fallen Angel because those are the two projects I prefer to work on. And uh, yeah, I was talking to Chris Trial and asked about some Star Trek work, and he goes, "Oh, yeah, yeah, I got something coming up, but uh, you know, it might be a few months, and we have to wait." And I was like, "Well, what what is it? You know what?" And, uh, you know, I thought maybe they were bringing back Deep Space Nine because that's something I really wanted to take a crack at that I missed out on the first time. Yeah. And then he tells me this, this crossover, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, seriously, what? You know, I thought he was kidding with me. Um, and he said, yeah, wait, nothing's, nothing's nailed down yet, he, he told me. And, but, um, you know, uh, what I want to do is commission you to, do, uh, to just do a cover based on this. So I did, uh, I did this cover with the TARDIS, and um, the Enterprise kind of stuck in the temporal swirl behind it. Um, and then, you know, just in typical um, Star Trek cover fashion, I featured the two actors kind of superimposed into the space behind. And, and two months went by, I didn't hear anything, and I, you know, being glass half empty kind of guy I am, I figured, nah, I, I knew this would never happen. Um, but I called to follow up on it and found out, yeah, it did, it, it was in fact happening, and they were going to get back to me and let me know, um, you know, more details as they knew it, but that it had been greenlit. And then they called me two weeks later. Actually, Denton Tipton, the editor, called me and said, you got the job. Um, that's the good news. Bad news is you got to start right away. <laughs> and it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's a really an intensive deadline uh, schedule. I'm, I, every month I have to do a cover in 22 pages of um, fully painted uh, art. Yeah, now how far but are I'm, you so far? Well, I'm, I'm on the seventh page right now, so I'm seven pages in on the first <laughs> okay. issue. Of, of eight issues? Eight issues, yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And first, uh, I, I need to, I need to have this wrapped, which I'm I'm in good, I'm actually doing pretty well because I have to have this wrapped by the middle of March, <clears throat> so I still have two more weeks, um, and only, you know, 15 pages. So I, I got a page a day. I got to get done because uh, this thing comes out in May. <clears throat> but I got to yeah, I got to keep that schedule of approximately a page a day. Basically, um, if you count the cover, we're we're looking at like 23 pages a month. Um, fully painted pages take, you know, a minimum of 20 hours, so I'm not really sleeping too much. Wow, that's crazy, <laughs> man. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule, dude. Are you ready to jump into the very ominous comic book grill? Sure. Here, here we Let's go. Let's do it. Question number one, uh, how challenging do you find it to decide on a style and character designs when you have to base your art on the likenesses of real people? Um, well... Actually, in, in this case, it's, it's very simple. Um, I'm, I'm doing a, a photorealistic painted style, so I'm pretty much painting them exactly as they look. There really isn't much design that's been done. Uh, the wardrobe people, the actors, all I have to do is watch the shelf and, and paint it as I see it. So there really isn't too much in, in that sense for me to think about. Uh, question number two, are you more of a TNG or a Doctor Who fan yourself, and how much knowledge of those properties do you need before tackling a project like this? I think, um, you know, especially with these two properties, they, you, you need to have a, a lot of knowledge, uh, and, and I do. Um, I'm a fan of both, a huge fan of both. If, if I had to uh, choose, um, you know, you asked which one more, I would say probably TNG, uh, as I've been um, watching that steadily since it came out. Now, Doctor Who, I watched as a child. Uh, the, I believe it was the third Doctor. You know, I used to be on PBS when I was a kid, and, and that's all I knew about it for the longest time uh, until it became more accessible here in the States. And then, um, then I just got caught up on everything uh, and became obsessed with that. So I'm more of a recent Doctor Who fan probably in the last few years, um, getting caught up on that. I've seen a lot of your TNG covers, and when I found out you were working on this, I was like, "That's the perfect guy." And then, and then when I found out it was painted artwork, is even better because I, I know I know you do you do the two different styles. Um, what 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 do you what do you prefer? I mean, do you have more fun with the painted, or do you prefer to do something more like what you do with Fallen Angel? Uh, well, Fallen Angel, I've actually done a, a, a myriad of different styles, and including something in between photorealistic painting and more expressive painting, just stuff oh, okay. in Return of the Sun. That's the style I prefer to do uh, more than anything. It's, it, it is fully painted, but it's, it's not restricted to photorealism, so you can, do, you can be a little more expressive. Um, it's hard to say. It depends on what I'm in the mood for. I think for this, photorealism is the way to go because you, you want to see, see the actors. You want to see them as, as you see them on TV. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a good way to go with this. I'm having fun with it. it the, the only downside is the time constraints. 
it would be nice um, if I could take a week to do every page and, and get some sleep, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think ultimately, ultimately it'll probably pay off. I, I, I was, I was stoked when I found out it was going to be eight issues and not just like three or four. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, that's what I was kind of one of the things I was excited about. I mean, it's a great project to be working on, anyways. But I, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's more of an epic story. You can't really squeeze it into three or four issues. You know, I was hoping there'd be something more. I was hoping for twelve, but I'm being greedy. <laughs> Uh, question number three, completely unrelated. Uh, I read online that you're a David Bowie fan. What is your favorite Bowie song? Oh, not that question. Uh, <laughs> it, it changes every time. Uh, no, and then the answer was not changes. I'm just saying the answer changes every time. Oh, I um, see. Oh, God, this this is tough. Probably right now, as we speak, it's uh, a song on Heathen, and I'm trying lightly to remember the title of it. I can't remember the title of it, and I'm not going to sing it, so I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, but but it's on Heathen. Jeez, um, you, you you got me. Well, okay. M most of the time, if if I had to pick an all-time favorite, because that's a cheesy answer, what it is today, because it does change. But if I had to pick an all-time favorite, the one I always fall back to most often would probably be <clears throat> um, Candidate. Well, Candidate Sweet Thing, I consider that one song off of um, Diamond Dogs' album. <clears throat> and the live in Philadelphia version. Question number four, uh, what is it like to work with Peter David, one of my favorite writers? Oh, it's a joy. It's a joy. And <laughs> it's um, it's entertaining because even his scripts are funny. Like, he sometimes he'll have notes in them and stuff. Um, really easy to work with. Um, doesn't mind getting a phone call from me once in a while, which is great because I, I don't like... Uh, when, when you're working on something and you're on like strict deadlines, the last thing you want to do is wait for answers. And I can always like call him up and bounce ideas off him. And actually, like work with the writer as opposed to um, you know the anonymous script. Yeah. Uh, we've had a working relationship for almost five years now. Um, you know, stead steadily for three years, but now off and on with the with the mini series, and it's it's been fantastic. And whenever we can, we do conventions together, especially since we're both on the East Coast, some of the smaller ones. Um, you know, we'll both uh, be put together like in tables right next to each other, and that's just a lot of fun. And there's not any Fallen Angel out right now, is there? Um, do, do you have anything coming out? <clears throat> no, the last thing that came out was a few months ago. Um, it came out trade paperback. It came out almost a year ago, I suppose. Was Return of the Sun. Right. Now I don't um, I don't know what the plan is. I'm I'm going to see Peter David at the Wild Pitch. I'll see him next and I'll bring this up. <clears throat> but I'm hoping that we're going to do something as soon as um, this uh, Star Trek uh, Doctor Who is, is finished in eight months. I hope. I mean, we, we both want to do it. It's just a matter of fitting it into the schedules and matching up our timelines. Jay, last question. Uh, you did a one-shot for Marvel, uh, uh, X-Men Origins, The Beast, and I've also seen some of your awesome uncommissioned stuff. Uh, my favorite is the Batman Beyond Space Ghost painting. If you had your pick to work on any established superhero regularly, who would it be? Ooh, uh, there's, there's a lot, and there's, you know, I, I, I tend to go to the obscure stuff, but probably if I just want to have fun, um, Batman Beyond. I just love painting that character. You know, there's there's really not much to painting the character, but he's he's so stylized and so much you can do with him. So visually, I think I would have a great time with that. That um, not only that, but the the, the Gotham City backgrounds of, of the future. Um, <clears throat> what I'd love to do is is you mentioned that um, I would you mentioned the, uh, the commission piece I did. I would love to do uh, what I call Elseworlds Finest, and, and that would be a team up of uh, Space Ghost, Space Ghost, and uh, Batman Beyond. Oh uh, yeah, it's genius. <laughs> I, would, I would love to see that, you know, even just a miniseries, but I think that would be great. Did you read the uh, Space Ghost comics that Alex Ross did? Yes, yes. What I, a cool I series! Love, I, oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that's such. I feel like it's such an untapped character that whenever it comes, somebody does something cool like that, it's it just that character could really shine a lot more than it does. Uh, DC getting uh, really big into the Beyond universe now. Maybe sometime down the road, uh, you'll 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 have a, a shot uh, to, to to draw for it. That would be super super cool. Uh, I just uh, talked to Adam Beach in a couple weeks ago on the show, and uh, he was he was fantastic. Oh, cool. Uh, Jay, quick question before we go. Last thing: Are you wearing sunglasses right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. But I'm <laughs> to control the lighting here. Yeah, I got. Uh... 
I have really dim lighting. I, I get a little photosensitive sometimes. But usually I wear sunglasses at cons because I'm hungover. It's really that simple. <laughs> really? Okay, all right. I've, I've, I think I've only seen you in interviews wearing sunglasses. Yeah, almost always. If I'm in public, it means uh, yeah, I'm wearing sunglasses. <laughs> well, Jay, uh, is there is there anything awesome at all? I'm sure you got to be really hush hush that you can reveal to us about about uh, Doctor Who Star Trek. <clears throat> well, I, I can I can say this. Um, there's <laughs> there's a lot of speculation, and and, and I'm I'm happy about that because it's really inspiring people's imaginations here. People are excited <laughs> about it. Um, but I I can't get into yes, this is going to happen. No, this is going to happen. I can say this. We are going to have it's called the Simulation Squared. We are going to have Borg, and we are going to have Cybermen. And they are working together. Because there was even a lot of speculation about whether or not they were going to even be working together. You know, people were like, are the Cybermen <laughs> assimilating the Borg, or is it the other way around? Well, I, I didn't say that. You know, I didn't right, say it right. Was, you know, <laughs> I didn't say it's going to be smooth. I didn't say, you know, I, I don't want to imply that anything could happen with these two. Um, but uh, again, we're only on the first issue, so everything's staying a little hush hush. But. You know, since the the cover for issue two is out there already, and people obviously, you know, that have seen it, obviously the the secrets out. These two characters are going to play a role in it, and and they're perfect for each other. Oh yeah, it's such a great idea. Just imagine. Well, Jay, I can't wait, man. Uh, it's definitely uh, the the book I'm most looking forward to. I'll be buying it. I'm sure a lot of my viewers will be buying it. Uh, thanks a lot for being on the show, everybody. Be sure. Uh, w w when does the first issue uh, hit? Do you, do you know the exact date? I don't. I don't have a hard date that I know of. I, I just heard they. I was told May. I imagine uh, since it's gonna the dead, my deadline is in the middle of March that it's probably gonna be somewhere in the middle of May. Okay, great. Well, uh, Jay, thanks again once again for uh, being on the show. Sure, happy to do it. Sure, happy to do it. Hey everybody, this is Captain Lowe. Okay, uh, before we jump on to other stuff, I wanted uh, really quick to show everybody the painting that we were talking about in that interview there. Uh, Okay, you've seen it now. Uh, the audio was not there. <laughs> anyway, but I caught it that time. Uh, any, anyway, um, that's the uh, the Space Ghost uh, Batman Beyond painting that we were talking about uh, that's super, super cool. And um, now uh, it's time for another message. Will Doctor Who escape this time? By Wool's New Shape Sky Ray with double flavors of raspberry and orange. And you get a free color picture card series showing Doctor Who and the Space Raiders battling with Daleks. Free when you buy Wall's new shaped Sky Ray. Only six months. And now we're going to do something entirely different. Tim, we're going to try something we've never tried before. What is that, Captain? Well, are you working on that? Are you, <laughs> are you practicing? Yes. Today... We're going to suddenly transform Come Look Late Night into a game show. Yes, indeed. Uh, time for a full-fledged game show, and tonight we're playing comic book Price is Right. Tim Lyons. That's uh, that's the Price is Right echo. That, that I, I <laughs> was trying to make it exactly yeah. like the show, and of course that always happens. That in Price absolutely, right. especially Drew Carey. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what we're saying. Uh, Tim, I'm going to uh, real, real quick. I've got a, got a couple things I got to do to set this up, and uh, then we're going to be ready to uh, get, to get to get rolling. What are you laughing at? Did Tim turn into the devil? <laughs> what do you mean? Did he turn into the devil? No, Tim's a lion. That's true. It's true. Um, I'm multiple lions. Uh, we're we're going to uh, give uh, three people a chance to win some prizes. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna put five people in contestants row. We're gonna give three people a chance to win prizes doing prize doing uh, pricing games. And uh, let me get up my desktop presenter here, and then we'll be ready. To All right, it's time now to uh, bring down our contestants for Contestants Row. Tim Lyons. Yes, sir. Who do we have first for Contestants Row? Well, Captain Logan, we've got senior nerd 
senior nerd rather, Lego geek and movie geek, come on down. You are the first contestants on The Price is Right. All right. Now, the first thing I want to mention to everybody uh, as as we get going here is uh, everybody in the chat, uh, when we start the game, please nobody write in the chat when it's time for somebody to answer questions so that uh, Gloria can just uh, see the people answering, okay? Uh, that's, that's the rule there, if you can uh, help us out with that. Uh, all of the values uh, for tonight are taken from comicspriceguide.com, and uh, you'll be bidding on the near mint values. Uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be... Uh, uh, bidding on the values of comic books, uh, at least for the uh, for the bidding. And uh, the winners tonight are going to receive a complete set of the first Red Knight arc uh, from the Real Manos, uh, issues one through three, and he's also going to throw in some Red Knight buttons. Uh, so a Red Knight prize pack, that's what we're playing for tonight. And uh, the first item up for bids is the Incredible Hulk number two. Tim Lands, would you tell us a little bit about the Incredible Hulk number two? Printed in 1962, written by Stan Lee and art by Steve Ditko, the second issue of the original Incredible Hulk run sees the Hulk saving the world from an army of toad men. All right, if everybody would go ahead and put in, uh, uh, if the uh, first person would put in their bids, and uh, Tim, go ahead and uh, tell us who the first person is, and please don't bid until it's your turn. Just the three people uh, who, are, who are playing, put in your bid. Remember, if you go over, um, you are uh, disqualified, and if everybody goes over, we'll have to do a do-over. Tim? Senor Nerd, what is your bid? Make it snappy, because we got a show to keep. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a $30. 30 30 dollars. All right, next up Lego Geek, what is your bid? We need like special music for this, you know? Like they we're waiting around for people to put their bids in music. You could do the Jeopardy theme, Tim? No. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 no. No, no. no, no. Now we're mixing metaphors. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and would you please put that price in the form of a question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lego Geek. Are we still waiting for Lego Geek? Okay, $50. $50. $50. And who's our last person? The last person is Movie Geek. Mach Schnell Movie Geek. <laughs> $150. $150. Actual near mint value is six thousand dollars, and that may uh, who, who was it again? That means that Movie Geek is the closest to the actual near mint value, but still misses by a long shot. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they, Movie they, Geek Tim, will I be playing our pricing Tim, game. I wasn't asking for your uh, color commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Movie Geek, you're going to be playing easy as one, two, three, and here's what we're going to ask you to do. You're going to rank these uh, indie comics from least valuable to most valuable, and I'm not giving you the dates. I'm not giving you the dates. Uh, so uh, as we pop these up on the screen, Tim is going to tell us a little bit about each of these issues. Tim, the first one is Hellboy Seed of Destruction number three. Written by Mike Mignola and John Byrne and penciled by Mike Mignola, this series sees Hellboy exploring a decaying temple where he discovers an ancient evil that threatens to unleash unholy forces on the world. Second comic is The Tick number three. Written by Bed Endland, the Tick's bizarre and zany adventures pit him up against scores of ninjas in this story, Night of a Million Zillion Ninja. And finally... Ninja Turtles number three. Written and drawn by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, this issue marks the first ever Master Splinter kidnapping, and the Turtles need April's help to save him. All right, so uh, we're going to give him a couple of minutes here. A couple, well, hopefully not a whole couple of minutes, but a couple of <laughs> seconds. And uh, he's going to rank these from least valuable to most valuable. And uh, if he gets it right, then uh, he's going to win a, a uh, Red Knight prize pack. And sorry, I'm not putting us on screen while we're doing this, but it's uh, there's there's a lot there's a lot going on. So yeah, it's just going to be this this boring uh, sort of uh, static shot until <laughs> okay. until something happens. Hellboy, T Tick, TMNT. Hellboy is least, TMNT is most. Hellboy is least, TMNT is most. Hellboy, Tick, and TMNT. That is correct. That's his order. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct answer was Ninja Turtles, Tick, and then Hellboy. Uh, team NT number three is worth $60. The Tick uh, was worth $12, and Hellboy was worth $4. And uh, incidentally, uh, they went from least to greatest, uh, uh, or from greatest to least. Did I say least to greatest when I... I think so, yeah. Oh, that means you got it right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You certainly did get I it right. I apologize. That's I, right. I, I, you I, certainly yeah. did. I wrote I wrote it wrong. I meant for it to be uh, most to least, but he did least to most. Okay, congratulations. Yay! Woo! Yay, good job. No, I, I really apologize. No, he got he got it right. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Turtles was, was worth the most, and Hellboy was worth the least. Well done, sir. Uh, you got it right. This is the first time we've ever tried anything like this, so uh, so forgive me for, for botching that up. All right, Tim Lyons, who is the next person for Contestants Row? All right, well, we're keeping Senior Nerd and Lego Geek, and coming into the fray is Comics Kid. Come on down, you are the next contestant on the comic book Price is Right. Yay! And the second item up for bids is The Flash, number 113. And uh, who's our first bidder, Tim? Uh, well, first, should I read the description, Captain Logan? Oh, yeah, you probably should do that. <laughs> Printed in 1962, <laughs> written by John, John Broom and drawn by Carm... Carmine Infantino, I presume. This issue features the first appearance of one of Flash's better-known rogues, the Trickster. Yeah, we should practice this, didn't we? Probably. <laughs> we should have done that, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we didn't think this through at all. <laughs> uh, first bidder this time around, just to uh, kind of shake things up a bit, is right. going to be Lego Geek. Well, actually, uh, whoever came in last should go first. I don't know who came in last, Captain Logan. So I'm no, just no, no. Working. I mean, I mean the the, the person who uh, just who just came into contestants. Oh, should be so, the first so what you're saying is comic skin. Yes, oh, we exactly. should have discussed this before. Yeah, we should have. It's cool. Go ahead. Okay, we have we didn't plan ahead at all. No, we really didn't. I apologize. All right. I anyway, apologize. comics We're... kid. Then uh, you're the you're the do, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is a non-union job. I quit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's just like the first show, Tim. Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars. All right, it, it, which means we're going to then go to Senior Nerd. Senior. Next time it'll just be a Tim playing. <laughs> Tim will play the whole thing. I thought I was just making you guys play and then like giving prizes to random people. Hey, that could work. It's kind of like you know giving prizes to charity. Yeah, <laughs> the charities $1, are viewers. One thousand dollars. All right, now then, Lego Geek. Now it is your bid. You have the advantage for you are going last. Five fifty. Actual near mint value. Ev. Actual near mint value is six hundred dollars. Wow, that means that Lego Geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in fact, uh, Lego Geek wins it, yeah. yeah. Everybody else was over. Everybody else was over. Lego Geek, are you ready to play a pricing game? I thought so! You better be, because we're going to make you do it anyway. Lego Geek, you're going to be playing higher or lower. Here's how this one works. Uh, instead of talking about uh, the the, co the comic's value, this time you're going to be talking, you're, you're going to be uh, looking for each item's cover price. So uh, I'd like you on each of these uh, five to say whether the real price is higher or lower than the false price you see on the screen. Three out of five wins it. So if you get at least three out of the five, you will win a Red Knight price bag. I keep wanting to say a Manos price bag, which I think would probably be like, a, like, a, like an entirely different thing. Is there a page missing from this? Flip it. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I print things double-sided, Tim. <laughs> I know. You like to save trees or whatever. I, yeah, yeah. I'll get that. No, I just do it because my printer's cool. I just do it because it's neat. I'm like, oh, cool, I can print on it. Anyway, uh, all right. Are you ready? Here we go. The first one is Amazing Spider-Man number 216. Do you think that is higher or lower than 75 cents? Again, the original price. Was the cover price that's uh, in that behind that red box, was it higher or lower and 75 cents. Well, this is fun. Higher. Higher, he says. The actual price was 50 cents, and so it was actually lower. 
Next comic is uh, Star Trek from Gold Key. This is Star Trek number one. Is it uh, higher or lower than 20 cents? We were going to have you read about these, weren't we, Tim? Yeah, we totally were, but now we shouldn't. Because we're already, like, too into it. Yeah, no, that's okay. We'll go, yeah, we'll go ahead and just moving on. That's cool. That's cool. We'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, is it higher or lower than 20 cents? Higher. No, 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 wrong person. Oh, sorry. There we go. Higher. Higher. <laughs> please, please don't write anything in the comments if you're not the person answering. The actual price was 12 cents, so it was lower. You have to get the next three right. And the next one is spawn number 14. Was it higher or lower than $1.50? Higher. Higher. See, this gives all the viewers at home time to, like, wonder, you know, they're all like, wow. Like, 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 we think this is really boring, but, like, everybody watching is probably going, just scratching their head, ooh, I wonder what it is. Actually, I'm like, I wonder what it is. <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> Lower. Lower. <laughs> Actual price is $1.95, and so it was higher. I'm sorry, you've already lost. <laughs> You think just for the sake of it, what, what's the last two? What do we got there? Oh, we'll go ahead and look at it, of course. Yeah, yeah, we uh, but have so, to. But, so, I'm but, sorry, but very sorry to say that you've already lost. Uh, but thanks a lot for playing. And uh, the next one was the question number one. Was it higher or lower than one dollar? What do you think, Tim? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, lower. And the actual price... Was a dollar fifty, and so you're Blast! wrong. That's okay. <laughs> and finally, and you know we really should have read these because it was it was a little bit unfair for him not to have the dates on these. Oh, that's, that's true. That's the th yeah. So um, yeah, I really apologize about that. We will do a better job next time. This is just our first time trying anything like this. Um, but yeah, we really should have read those. Plus, I wrote them. And it hey, took time. man, you know. It... <laughs> uh, the last one. You're the captain. Was I'm just the first mate. Superman number ten. This would have been all the way back in 1938, Tim. Well, I'm going to say uh, lower, than 12, or cents, lower than 12 cents. Higher lower than 12 cents. Back in 38? It was, in fact, 10 cents. So you're right. Yeah. Tim Lyons wins! <laughs> I got the one correct answer. Oh, that Man. is a shame. That's a, that's a harder game than you give it credit for. You think you have a 50 50 chance, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's tough. But yeah, having the year definitely helps. So. Yeah, we'll we'll do we'll do better next time. Yeah, sorry about that. maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll try to send him something. Tim, uh, what what is uh, who is our next person uh, for contestants row? Okay, one more person to get a shot at uh, winning a a um, red knight prize pack. Zazu Bar. Zazu Bar. Yeah, still in. By the way, quick plug for Zazu Bar. Still in the running on who reviews the reviewers. He's uh, he's uh, in the final four. Well, in the meantime, the they're the next contestant on Comic Book Price is Right. <laughs> yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks Tim. Uh, the, the, uh, the last item up for bids is All-Star Comics number three. Would you tell us a little bit about All-Star Comics number three, Tim? All right, well, if I get to my notes here, All-Star Comics number three, printed in 1940, this unprecedented team-up put together eight of DC's most popular characters in the same book for the first time, creating the Justice Society of America. And uh, who, our first bidder is Zazubar. And uh, what do you bid, Zazubar? Everybody at home writing down their answers. Please don't wiki it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't. I should have. I should have said that. Uh, I. I. It's not. You should have announced fair. the site that you got the the prices from after the game. I should have. You're right. I should have done that. I just wanted to give them credit. You know. Zazubar says one thousand dollars. One thousand dollars. All right. Next contestant. Senior nerd. Senior nerd. What is your bid, please?
<laughs> Senior Nard says eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars, and he's our final contestant. Final contestant is Comics Kid. Comics Kid, give us your bid, please. I I encourage a bid of one dollar. <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Tim, Tim, don't help anyone. You're you're uh. That's I, not... I just want it to be like Price is Right, you know. When was the last time you heard the announcer on Price is Right go? I, I think you should bid a dollar, <laughs> Gloria. Uh, Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Actual near mint value is one hundred and six thousand dollars. And uh, who got who got nearest to that? Uh, Senior nerd with eight thousand dollars. With eight thousand dollars. Still not even in the ballpark. But you know what? Ballpark. That is a surprising amount. I am I'm nonplussed by that. <laughs> well, uh, w- w- once once again, uh, nineteen forty, uh, really uh, unprecedented, important comic book. Um, and, uh, and, and, and comics from that, I mean, if they're important and they're from that period, um, they get really, really rare and they're worth a whole lot of money because most people pulp them, you know? I mean, like, you're sure, not, yeah. not going to find one of those, and that, that's why that's why it's worth so much. Uh, all right. He's going to play Danger Price, and here's how Danger Price works. Uh, you're going to choose every issue but the one whose near mint value is the amount at the top of the screen that you're going to see. So if the comic that goes with the danger price is left at the end, you win. So we're going to have him pick each comic except for the one that he thinks is actually worth the price at the top of the screen. And Tim, would you tell us a little bit about these comics? Some of the titles that first put Marvel on the map, these number ones, Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men, and Daredevil, are some of the most valuable and sought after for Marvel collectors. One of these comics is worth $34,000. Now, your job is to not give me the comic that is worth $34,000, but to give me all three that aren't, leaving that one left over. So uh, think about it for a second, and then uh, give us the first one you'd like to see us ax. Remember, don't give us the one worth 34000 Give us the ones that are not worth that much. And, uh, of, of course, uh, they're all of uh, varying amounts, and that is not necessarily the, the lowest or the highest. Uh, you, 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 you have no idea what the others are. So um, choose wisely. So how about them Yankees, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is uh, this is what happens when your contestants can only type in chat. I I I knew this was going to take time, but I couldn't think of any better way to do it. No, no, no. It, it works perfectly, except that we're supposed to be entertaining or something. I think. Yeah, I th- I think I think yeah. so. Well, that's the whole reason. See, I mean, like maybe I should have just kept putting us on the screen so that we could be entertaining during this. But then, <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, to a, jump a back jig? and forth? And, like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna um, uh, quickly do a stand-up bit. So the other day I was talking to Tim Lyons and I was saying, hey Tim, uh, what do you know about comic books? And Tim said, I know absolutely nothing about comic books. And I said, no, I gave you Ghostbusters last week. You read that. Tell me something about Ghostbusters. Go ahead. Um, you know, it was a movie from 1984 directed by Ivan... No, 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 the comic. Not the... No, the comic. Oh, well, it was pretty awesome. See? See? Also, we He's have an, an answer at this point. We do have an answer. Uh, Senior Nerd says Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and Daredevil... All right, let's Meaning let's. Meaning uh, that X Men is the top. Let's ax those in that order. He said, uh, w- "What first? Fantastic Four? Uh, Spider Man first. I'm sorry. Okay. Spider Man was worth eighty thousand dollars. Good job. You did not hit the danger price there. The next one was was Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four, sixty thousand dollars. Well done. You're still in the game. And finally, Daredevil. Here it comes. Here it comes. $10,000. Congratulations. You're a winner. Yay. That is amazing. You're a winner. Well done. And uh, you win a uh, Manos prize pack, a, uh, a Red Knight prize pack. So fantastic. Uh, everybody who won, be sure to uh, send me your um, your information. Uh, just just um, uh, just send me a message and uh, let me know that you won, and um, we'll get you in touch with Manos. Or you can just uh, talk to Manos. Um, he and I are getting together to to, uh, to put together the prizes. Um, so anyway, uh, contact contact us, and uh, we will get you your your uh, Red Knight prize packs. Uh, Tim, that was fun. Yeah, that was a little different. Was. That was um, like nothing we've ever tried before. <laughs> 
It'll be smoother next time, I'm sure. Uh, but we are we are hoping to do more game show type stuff later on. And um, I, I believe it, I actually have done quite a bit of game show type activities, uh, but all, always live and always with uh, contestants I can see face to face. So yeah, you know, I'm that actually throws kind of me curious, a little you know, bit. Yeah. I'm kind of curious if people like that. You know, uh, so send us your feedback. Give us your feedback. Let us know. Yeah, and, know you like and, and just remember that um, you know we'll try really hard to make it smoother next time. You know, but just just you know if if you uh, if you like the the idea and the way we did it and all that, we'd love to know. Tonight's character of the week is uh, tonight's obscure character of the week. Uh, we're just going to pick random characters now. We've ran out of all the obscure ones. Tonight's obscure character of the week is brought to you by the face of Bo, because some things are really hard to make into good action figures. Though they really tried with this one. Apparently he's got a button on the back that makes his mouth move. And today's obscure character of the week is uh, an odd Star Trek character named uh, Lieutenant Mores. And uh, Lieutenant Mores is, uh, it was originally from the animated series of Star Trek. Uh, she was a regular officer there, and uh, she was a Cadian, uh, which is a species that was, you know, there in the animated series. We saw cat people in one or two of the movies. But, um, you know, never as regular characters, and they never talked. Um, anyway, she had a tendency to get her tail stuck in doors. Uh, you know, she'd be on the bridge, and she'd leave the bridge, and then she'd get a tail or, uh, stuck in doors. I mean, that was pretty much her whole shtick. Like, I have a tail, and so it gets stuck in doors. Um, she had a uh, romantic interest in Scotty, whom she called funny and attractive for a human. Outside of the animated series, uh, she pops up in a lot of DC Star Trek comics set after Star Trek for the Voyage Home, though uh, she doesn't do a whole lot in them. In Peter David's New Frontier novels, uh, she makes a time jump into the 20th fourth century and becomes a regular character uh, in that series, uh, serving um, there on uh, on his ship. And since the animated series is generally considered uh, um, non-canon with the live-action uh, Trek series, she's of course not really a canon character, but it's interesting how she pops up all over the place otherwise. And uh, like I said, she's pretty much just there to give some alien variety to the ship, you know, uh, so we don't have just all totally humanoid type characters. Um, and I, I think I think that uh, that was the, that was a smart thing to do back when uh, uh, they were they were doing an animated show, um, and uh, you know they didn't have to put somebody in a, a, a cat suit, which wouldn't have been a cat suit. It wouldn't right, be a right, suit right. that made you look like a cat. Yeah, See, um, right. I'm actually kind of curious whether whether this particular character may have been a small inspiration for the Kilrathi uh, race in the Wing Commander series, uh, because there was a uh, a good Kilrathi. The Kilrathi were the bad guys in the Wing Commander series, for those unfamiliar, uh, at least up through Wing Commander three. And uh, there's a uh, character Hobbs. That was one that had um, defected and, and was a good Kilrathi, and they were a, a race of cat people, basically. So I'm wondering if, if this uh, acted as some sort of inspiration for Chris Roberts and, and the other producers on that on that game series. Uh, I bet it did. I, I bet it very, did. Sure. I'd be very yeah. surprised if it didn't. Yeah, um, and, and I'm sure and I'm sure that uh, that series borrowed um, from lots of sci-fi shows and and things of that nature. Uh, if you have an idea for Obscure Character of the Week or uh, something you'd like to see me talk about on the show, ideas for the show, anything like that, feel free to send me a personal message on uh, Geek Solution, and I'd love to hear from you. If you have anything you'd like to send to us, uh, comics to review, anything like that on the Comic Vault, you can always send it to our P.O. Box. It's Geek Solution, P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas, 66285. And you can also check out the Comic Vault on wearegeeksnotnerds.com. We've got lots of uh, really awesome auctions up right now. I just got a whole new haul of stuff in. I've got a huge uh, lot of Green Lantern stuff on right now for you Green Lantern fans, so go check that out if you'd like to bid on it. And um, all of the Comic Vault stuff is uh, is on eBay. We got new fun stuff every week. Go check it out. And there's also lots of other fun things to do on wearegeeksnotnerds.com. And now it's time once again to find out what I've pulled from the vast and ever ominous Comic Book Vault. Today on the Comic Vault, we're going to take a look at Star Trek X-Men. Uh, this is a uh, strange thing that was uh, that was done in the 90s. There were actually two of these. There was uh, Star Trek X-Men, which uh, pits the original crew, the original series crew, uh, with the X-Men. And then uh, there was another one uh, later on, that uh, which, which honestly, I probably should have reviewed this one considering we put First Contact behind you. I just thought of that. Um, but, uh, but uh, oh, oh well, I guess I didn't really think ahead. I wanted to do this because I'd never read this one before. I've read oh, the other yeah. one, but I hadn't read yeah, this one, yeah, so I wanted yeah, to yeah. do it. Well, anyway, the other one was uh, Star Trek Next Generation X-Men, and it takes place directly after First Contact, and they called it Second Contact. Oh. And, and what they do is uh, they take the crew, uh, not that I want to review that, but they, they, uh, they, 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 go, they go right after First Contact when they're trying to make the, the, the jump back into the future. They wind up in the X-Men universe. 
universe is what happens. Um, so so anyway, so anyway, uh, kind of odd. Well, uh, what this one does wait, is wait, wait, how, how do they get around the problem that Xavier and and Picard look exactly alike? Uh, they didn't because those hadn't happened yet. Uh, that that was that was ninety six, ninety seven. I'm joking. Oh, I'm joking. I can never tell. <laughs> But yes, they did a novel after that in the, about the same. It wasn't the same comic, but it was a yeah. it was a novel set in the same kind of kind of continuity. And um, I couldn't read that without thinking of the same voices in my head. And those two had dialogue together, so it was weird. Anyway, this uh, th this issue was a one shot, and uh, what wh what it does is uh, it brings um, again it brings the X Men and uh, the original crew together, and uh, it it does it by having uh, the Enterprise go around Delta Vega. Again. Again, uh, where they were du during uh, where no man has gone before, where uh, which is like in the center of the galaxy, and um, where, where uh, you get the strange anomaly that uh, messes up um, a couple of crew members and basically turns them godlike, and that's the that's the one with Gary Mitchell. Well, uh, Gary Mitchell comes back in this, and um, there is a uh, I think it's Proteus. Uh, there, there's a there's a there's an X Men villain who merges with Gary Mitchell. Gary Mitchell is dead. But apparently his essence is somehow still in his body. I don't really get how that works. But anyway, so they so uh, Proteus uh, uh, puts his power together with Gary Mitchell's power, and then the X Men and the original crew have to fight. They have to fight them. Honestly, um, the story is kind of weak. Um, it's a neat looking book. Um, I like the uh, I like the art a lot. Um, it's fun to look at. It's fun to see uh, Wolverine attack Spock. Um, and stuff like that, uh, and they have a little bit of fun with um, with uh, the fact that uh, Beast and Doctor McCoy both have the same last name. So every time somebody says Doctor McCoy, they both say <laughs> what? Uh, that's that's kind of fun. Um, but honestly, this is one of those things that should have been a lot longer. Um, it spends basically the first half just having everybody go, "What? Hey, what are we doing in the same universe?" And then the, it's it's one of those things that you get you usually get pitfalls with things like this, where we, we we merge two universes together and we spend most of the comic talking about how and why that happened. And, and not really exploring so much uh, the, uh, the 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 fun character interactions. There, there, we've got the token stuff. Um, yeah. We 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 have we have the thing. We we have we have a panel at the end where we've got Kirk. Um, uh, talking to Cyclops and saying um, something along the lines of of um, of a uh, well uh, we're we're uh, or I'm sorry Cy Cyclops saying well we've seen a lot of really crappy futures and it's nice to see one that's kind of optimistic and not crappy uh, you know with, with uh, Days of Future Past and all that and then Kirk has this odd line where where he's like uh, well thanks to thanks to you and people like you I can see how humanity got to where we got and I'm like you're in an alternate reality I don't know how that that makes that makes any sense at all uh, but they they beat um, they. They beat Proteus uh, slash Gary Mitchell kind of easily. It's sort of it's sort of just uh, well, we've got both Bishop and a tractor beam, and that's all you need. Um, and since we've got B Bishop backing up a tractor beam, we win. Uh, and and of course, it's it's uh, it's kind of a basic you know destroy the universe plot. Um, I don't know why people want to destroy the universe in this, but hey, it's only you know 30 pages, so that's all we had time to do. Um, honestly, some of the more fun stuff is just uh, the 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 uh, arc that's in the back that has nothing to do with the story. Where, where we uh, we've got like. Uh, uh, Beast playing chess with with Spock. That's kind of fun. I don't know why why we couldn't have made the comic long enough to make that happen. It's just one of those things that should have been a few issues as opposed to just a one shot. Maybe they could have sure, fleshed yeah. it out and made it a little bit more interesting. Um, and uh, fun artwork, you know, looks great. But uh, but yeah, not the. Not the most um, in, impressive story in the world. I think the first contact one was a little bit better, um, but it was hokier. So you know, um, if you if you're only doing these in one shots, hokier is probably better. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. So that's that. What do, you, what, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about crossovers in general, Tim? Just put, putting two things together like that. Do you, do you like that or? Uh, you know, one of my favorite video games of all time right now is Super Mario Crossover Online. I, I, have you you've played this? I'm I'm sure. I've not. Okay. What are we talking about? Uh, is it a weird hack thing or? N well, kind of, sorta. It's a flash game made by a company called Exploding Rabbits. Uh, and uh, now they've got version 2.0 out there. And Super Mario Crossover started out as just a bunch of characters in in the old 8-bit Nintendo universe. You know, you've got Samus from Metroid. Of course. Uh, you've got Link from Legend of Zelda. Of course, you got Mario. Uh, you've got Simon Belmont from Castlevania. Bill Reiser from Contra. Sophia the Third from Master Blaster. And you're playing through the first Super Mario game as any of those characters. Oh, also Mega Man's thrown oh, see, in there. I've seen those, but yeah. I thought that was just a hack thing. Yeah, okay. uh, well, it, it is kind of a hack thing. It's a Flash game. And uh, that's... So, yeah, they can be beautiful and brilliant if they're well executed and well done. They can also be very tragic and, and terrible, 
depending on how things turn out, because it can almost ruin both properties, like Alien versus Predator, thanks to yeah. Paul W. S. Anderson. Especially when, we, we, of course, when they make it canon. I mean, you, usually, usually in Star Trek, it's just you know we get a couple of uh, things together, and it's not canon. We're just kind of ha having a good time. Um, but I don't want to see it done just for the sake of doing it. Like explore the character interactions. You know, you can do you can do some interesting things. Um, they 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 really miss the boat in in that by not having um, more than one issue. Um, and that's what I that, that's that's why I said in that interview that I was really excited about uh, Doctor Who Star Trek getting eight issues. Um, yeah, that's time to flesh it out. Um, it, it, the, I, I think that I would be very very surprised if the story wasn't pretty in depth with that many issues. You know, um, that, I mean, there's a lot of really great mini series that are only four issues. Eight's a maxi series that gives you plenty of time to do cool stuff. So. Yeah, and I also really enjoyed uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe when it came out I liked uh, it too. on Xbox uh, 360 and PS3. I liked it too. And you know, honestly, I really liked the story, and I liked how they just more or less just threw those two together, mm -hmm. and then focused on the character interaction. Just throw them together. That's the MacGuffin. Then that's move the thing on. is that it's a MacGuffin. It's not so important how or why it works. Just say yeah. it works. And the thing is, with the Star Trek X Men thing, they had the perfect MacGuffin. It was like, okay, yeah. Delta Vega again. It does sure. weird things to things. So you know, it, mer it merged the universe. Then let's go. You know, let's let's go. And I didn't even mind the whole Proteus thing. It was just let's let's do something with it. Let's take our time. Yeah. So, anyway. uh, but when you can explore things like that, then it's great. You know, when you actually have something you can do with it that's interesting. Like, honestly, uh, now I kind of want to read that. I mean, d do Wolverine and, and uh, Dr. McCoy, uh, you know, ever, you know, Bones, do they ever interact? Because they'd have similar personality types. They really don't. I wish they had because they, they, they uh, Bones is overwritten in it. Um, McCoy is just, like, constantly dogging on Spock like he does, but not as well as usual. And so it's just, like, he seems like kind of a jerk rather than, you know, interesting. But you're right, you know, characters like that, they should have put they should have put together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the answer for this week's Know Your Batmobiles. And uh, the answer for uh, this time was, in fact, 1990. Oh, and, uh, that, oh, what did you think it was? I thought it was 89 just because of the, uh, uh, you know, I figured that once... I figured that the movie would have inspired it more than more than it apparently did. Well, that was a Batmobile that was in an, an issue of Suicide Squad, and uh, an interesting tidbit about this was that uh, it was really high tech because it had its own modem <laughs> built into the car. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, I, I thought that was cool too. Was and it of 9, course, ninety six hundred baud. <laughs> he had it so he could talk to the Batcave. And uh, the, the correct answer to the trivia question this week, uh, who did IDW cross Star Trek with, of course, was uh, Legion of Superheroes. And that was another longer series, which was neat that they did that. And who got that right first, Gloria? I believe that was... As she gets back to her notes very epically... Our fourth item for bids. Trekker... 26. Trekker 26. How appropriate. Trekker 26. So well done. Good job to you. You win us talking about you. Well done. Yay. <laughs> You're not even trying. Anymore. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even trying. <laughs> Any, anyway, well, uh, hey, thanks everybody for watching Comic Late Night. Hope you had a great time. Uh, we certainly did. Uh, thanks a lot to Tim Lyons and Gloria for joining me. Uh, we always have a really fun time here on Comic Late Night. We'll see you again in two weeks uh, when I'll be talking to the uh, very talented JT Krull. And I... Uh, I should mention, uh, you should, of course, support your local comic book store. And uh, remember, to help control the pet population, have your pets spayed or neutered. Once again, I'm Captain Logan, signing off. Signing off.